Welcome back to our fifth episode in our series on foundations. I'm going to have a prayer with you, then we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 6. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you'll help us as we talk about important things today. I ask for your spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you have them with you, to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 is a passage that speaks about foundations, but in a way that indicates that there's a time to get past them. Hebrews chapter 6, and looking at verse 1, it says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Now, there are other verses that come after this. There's more to the foundation than repentance and faith. And we're not going to talk about perfection today because I think we still need to be on these foundations. So today we're going to talk about repentance. And I want to talk to you a bit about sadness. Because when you think of repentance, you think of sorrow for sin. But in the Bible, there are two distinct types of sorrow. One that's good and one that's bad. And maybe even some verses that might be surprising to you. If you have your Bible again, turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 addresses a passage or has a passage about sadness that might be surprising to the average person in the decade of depression that we've been living through. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and looking at verse 3. It says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by a sad countenance the heart is made better. And the verse before says, Better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will take it to heart. In what sense is this true, what Solomon said? In what sense is sorrow better than laughter? For you know that laughter, or maybe we could even say joy, does good like a medicine. I think we can find the answer in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Turn with me there, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 speaks about the two types of sorrow, the one that's healthy and the one that is not. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Speaking of church discipline, Paul wrote, For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle or letter made you sorry though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance, for you were made sorry or sad in a godly way, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Now listen carefully to verse 10. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Are there two types of sorrow? Sure, there is. There's a sorrow of the world that leads to death, and there's a sorrow for sin that leads to repentance. That sorrow of the world, the worldly sorrow, is a sorrow for the, for the misfortunes that come your way. It's that sorrow for the way you've been mistreated, the sorrow for the way that people have spoken to you. It's that sorrow that has at its root what you could call selfishness. And what about that sorrow of repentance? It's just the opposite. It's a sorrow that has at its root selflessness. It's the sorrow that says, I am sad that I hurt someone. I'm sad that someone has gone the wrong way. I am sad for my part in the crime and the misery on this planet. So there is a sorrow of the world. There's a sorrow of repentance. And it's that sorrow of repentance that is the foundation of faith. I think many Christians today are skipping over repentance. And when we skip over repentance, we skip over the most important invitation to our church today. You may remember Revelation 3, the Laodicean message in verse 19, where Jesus says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Then he says, Be zealous therefore and do what? Repent. Repent from those things, those, those things we've done to hurt him, the wrong way that we've gone. When I think about these two types of sorrow, the one that is the foundation of faith and the one that is often the end of faith, 
I think you could hardly have a greater contrast. That sorrow that is all about protecting yourself and that sorrow that's all about changing self. You remember what Solomon said when he said the sorrow of the heart is better than laughter? He said it's because by that sorrow the heart is made better. I'm suggesting today while you're home alone, while you're stuck somewhere with this virus, that you spend some time being sad. Not sad about how you've been treated or sad about how things have gone or not in self-misery about what's going on around you, but sad about how we have failed Jesus. Sad about how we have failed to measure up to the moral principles we understand. I'm doing that today. You need to do that today. And if we let that sorrow do in us what it can, it will lead us to turn away from sin. And that leads to life. And that's why Paul, when he contrasted the two sorrows, said one of them is for a time. Do you remember that in 2 Corinthians 7? He said, you sorrowed for a time because the sorrow of repentance gives way to joy. But that sorrow of the world gives way to deeper sorrow, more disappointment. It's... It is the, the nature of much of the depression we see today. And before I close, let me clarify on that point that not all depression is related to selfishness. There is a depression related more to a lack of exercise, related more to an abundance of sugar, related more to a, a lack of sleep, related more to hormonal issues. It's sure there's, there are sorrows that have little to do with sin but they may have to do with habits. But that sorrow of repentance is a choice. It's a choice to submit to what the Spirit is doing in our life. And I recommend that to us today as a foundation of faith in a time of difficulty. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you would give that sorrow that re relates to repentance to each of us today, that you would do something to finish the work you've started in us. I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen.